when I was running the system, boarding schools were 10,500. When people pay 10,500 in boarding, they don't even buy textbooks. They don't buy textbooks. That is free. We even give them laptops, free. There were visas. We did immediately 22 visas. And the children were already doing things that I couldn't also imagine myself. We funded UNAD to the tune of over 4 billion. And between the creation of the state and the time we came, the total that UNAD got was about 3 billion. And we're already talking four point something billion. Go to the net today. All that you will see there, I can tell you that for every good building you see in UNAD, every three of them, two, must have come in our period. We set ourselves a target that by the time we were into the first term which is uh, 2011, like it will have four universities. And by the time we were finishing, if we have to do a second term, like it will have six universities. There was only one when we came. And I can tell you that if not for disruptions, the first set of targets were achieved. There is UNAD, there is Apple Babalola University, there is a uh, UST three. There is a federal university oh yeah, four. So that target of four would have been achieved. And target of six would have been achieved because we also have some private universities that we were already um, discussing with very, very seriously, Crawford and some others that were coming. So education at primary, secondary and tertiary levels. I, I believe that what we had as blueprint is still a masterpiece. They said we raise fees. They know that we didn't raise fees. What happened when I was governor was that I gave the governing council of the university the free hand to run the university and run them well. And the government council agreed in their meeting, they proposed a salary, a, an increase in fees. They brought it to me for approval. And I told them, I said, I want to approve fee increase for university students that are already in the university. I said, increase your fees for those who are yet to come in so that they have a choice to make. They can now make the choice and say, I cannot come to UNAD, that fee is too high for me. Or, I want to go to UNAD. So the fee increase was for only those who were to come in, who then later came in. Yes, the fees were fixed in my tenure. I allowed the, the a government council to do it because it was reasonable that they should do it because we wanted to continue to improve the standards there but we did not approve fee increase for anybody that will then have been from part two second year it was supposed to start with those who were going to come in so what we did in education, we thank God, they are there. For students in tertiary institutions, the government replaced the bursary tokens with the bumper scholarship awards. The new scholarship policy had the benefit of stimulating students to attain great academic height as best grade stood as a requisite qualification. I introduced scholarships. And with the scholarship, it means that if you are really brilliant, school system is for you. The scholarships are there, even at secondary school levels there are scholarships for boarding, even for the 10,500 per term feeding. There are students that are taking it free. So 
there was there are scholarships undergraduate postgraduate and pre-university and every child that is disabled are supposed to go to school free and the vice chancellor of UNAD had then also assured me that he was going to uh, put in a university scholarship scheme apart from the one we were doing which is for all the kitty students whether it's in Unilag or Ife or in Ibadan or in Obomo Shore they were all entitled to that the vice chancellor then was already preparing a new a university scholarship scheme for brilliant students again so it means if you are brilliant and you go to unite the likelihood of you being on one scholarship or the other either that of the university or that of the state will be very very high i i reckon that at least 40 percent of the kitty students would have been on one scholarship or the other yes we created other universities and it became other university but we were funding and let me tell you the goal the goal for USTI is even not that it will be 100 percent dependent on the state government we were going to get we were already getting the koreans into it and it would have been the first of its kind in nigeria under a ppp scheme we had both the koreans and the government would have been funding it the government of my time was ready to fund everything when we were getting the license the NUC executive secretary told me very clearly he said I hope you know that you cannot operate a university and a college of education as one institution people of the fountain so when people were, were shouting about Ikere wanting to have College of Education there as part of University of Education. One professor even said, ah, can't you make it an institute? I said, yeah, you are a professor, I am not. The people are running NUC are also professors. Maybe you will understand yourselves more. Please go to NUC and get a paper for me that says they can operate it as an institute. One year after, we haven't seen a university and a College of Education existing together in Ikere. The truth is still the truth. Today, what I said is yet to be controverted. As far as I'm concerned, history and posterity will, will record it someday. We we'll put there an institution that in two years, people were getting there to say, this is a very damn good institution. They, they've gotten a lot of reviews in two years. I took a university to Ikere. There would have been only two universities. UNAD and the one I took to Ikere myself. Ikere is not my hometown. And it's not as if I was paying any ransom as a result of voting or anything. It is because that's what my conscience wants us to do, to put a university then in a career. When we now decided that we were going to move the College of Education, if they are not going to allow them to be together, I said the committee should go around. To decide. The committee decided it is going to be a fatty, as far as I'm concerned. And let me say it. I believe that if there had been none of all that mess, I wanted to create one more university. Where? Anywhere. And it would have been a postgraduate university. So there would have been enough postgraduate university, different from even some of all this that people are seeing. We had vision. So, it was not because, in fact, it's my town. If I can go out of my way to put a university in Ikere, just because I believe it is right to be there, they didn't vote for me. We lost the two seats in Ikere 
and a lot of people came to me and said you must be a mad politician to want to compensate people who didn't vote for you I said I I recognize that but he kind of had the College of Education when there was no other tertiary institution in Ekiti. We cannot leave them behind. Other people are now having universities. The first is becoming the last. Let us now make sure that they can upgrade to a university. That was my offense. But I'm very, very proud that what I did, I did in good faith. I said it once. I said whatever I did for Ikere, God should pay me in multiples because I meant well every moment. But those people who said a college of education is superior to a university are there. They are still there. And I'm sure they will be reminding them and their children when the time comes. So, it is not out of parochialism. It is because I always want to be fair and I always want to consider others before I consider myself. So the people who said both of them will also be achieved immediately. In fact, they said immediately. And I would have loved to see how it was going to be done so that in future I will also know if there was something lacking in my own knowledge base. People of the Fountain.